What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So Cogmore, this is the League of Legends champion from The Void, I'm going to be covering today. Last week we covered Cho'Gath from The Void. So, um, I've had a little cheeky look and we're in the same theme as Cogmore. The guy has a bio, but no story. No surprise there. The same as Cho'Gath and the same as Malzahar the week before. So, clearly getting no love. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through his bio, I'm going to go through his skins and everything and anything else that relates to Cogmore as well. I'll timestamp the whole thing as I always do. So yeah, let's kick things off with the bio. So, when the prophet Malzahar was born in Ekathia, he was led there by an ominous voice which thereafter anchored itself to his psyche. I wonder how this relates to him then. From within this voice bestowed upon him terrible purpose. And though Malzahar was no longer tormented by its call, the voice did not cease its unrelenting summons. This baleful beckon, gently flickered, now fastened to ruined terror, drew forth the putrid beast that ambled across a threshold it did not understand, wielding a fissure be Okay, widening a fissure between the spaces which were never meant to me. So Kogmar was one of the things that kicked off the whole void. Is that right? Or the, the connection of the void? Hmm. There, among the haunting ruins of Akathia, <clears throat> Kogmor manifested in Valoran with unsettling curiosity. The spark which led him to Rune Terror teased him still, urging him gently towards Malzahar, so the connection between him and Malzahar somehow. It also encouraged him to familiarise himself with his new environment, to the stark horror of everything he encountered on his journey. Okay, learn something new every day. Didn't realise this was going to be part of his bio. The enhancing colours and aromas of Rune Terror's intoxicated Kogma, and he explored the fruits of the strange world the only way he knew how, by devouring them. Okay, at first he sampled only the wild flora and fauna he happened across. Until... And as he traver traversed the parched temple flats, Tempest Flats, however, he came upon a tribe of nomads. Okay, where is this going? The guys are probably going to eat him. Seemingly unhampered by conventional rules of physics, Cogmore consumed... <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? Every nomad and any obstacles they put him in his way. So the guys are chewing him up. Amounting to many times his own mass and volume. The most composed of his victims may have had time to wonder if this was due to the cause causing ends what to the caustic caustic enzymes which stung the ground as they dripped from his gaping mouth. All the such musings were abruptly concluded. <clears throat> Even his feeding friends did not did nothing to satiate Cogmore's appetite, so the boy's hunger. His swerve of destruction continues still as he is, in whatever that is, draws towards so the connection between him and Malzahar. What happens when he finds him is anyone's guess. Okay, that was a weird bio. That was a bit of a weird bio, so he's clearly got some connection to Malzahar, and maybe that connection to Malzahar was one of the reasons why how or why he bridged this gap between the Void and Rune Terror. And clearly he's got an appetite, hence the name. The mouth of the abyss. Okay. Okay. So the guy has no... If I, what have got here? Trendemir. If that's just hunger, I don't want to see anger. <laughs> okay. Okay, that ties in with the bio. He has no story and not much else. Hmm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to his skins and then I'm going to move on to his login themes if he has any. Let's go. Okay, so this is Cogmore Skins. This is the original skin. Belched forth from the rotting void incursion deep in the wastelands of Ekathia, Cogmore is an inquisitive yet putrid creature of a caustic gaping with a caustic gaping mouth. This particular void spawn needs to gnaw and drool on anything within reach to truly understand it. Okay, though not inherently evil, hmm, tell it to the people who've been chewing. Cogmore's beguiling naivety is dangerous as it often precedes a feeding frenzy. Not for sustenance, but to satisfy its unending curiosity, so even scarier. So it, it murders people and eats them just for curiosity. Okay, uh, and the base skin kind of perfectly fits that look as well, just as I imagined. What the... F <laughs> what is that? Monarch Kogmar. That's horrendous. That's one of the worst skins I've ever... That, it's not as bad as Poppy, but that's... 
Jeez, that's terrible. That is a terrible skin. Oh, okay, it spoke too soon. <sighs> Lion Dance Cogmore. It is unclear if Cogmore even understands what Lunar Reveal is, but someone seems to have painted him for that, for it. That person has presumably been eaten and digested, but Cogmore does look very festive. Wow, that's, that's, that's tough, that's tough. I wouldn't want to be paying anything for that. If they get it free, cool, but I ain't paying for that skin. Wow. Next one, Jurassic. So like Choga, Jurassic, in fact, yeah, definitely like Jurassic Park. Jurassic, Cogmore, no bio. And maybe to the left of him there is the starting parts, or starting parts? The bones of Chogaf. Maybe. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Battle cast, we've got a battle cast to Chogath as well. Mass produced artillery units based on the now extinct Cogmore organism. Victor has invented an in, 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 indigenous shell delivery system best appreciated indigenous, best appreciated from about 100 yeah, miles away. The latest designs, maximum range. Okay, that one's okay as well. Nothing too, oh my god. Pugmar. Pugmar is a nine month old purebred pug with a sweet disposition and, and possibly some sort of saliva, salivary problem, which most dogs have anyway. Great with children and pets, highly food motivated, has eaten three action figures and one doll, approached with extreme caution. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of, you've got Alistar there as well, and you've got Renekton in the background, rocking that Toy Story Flex. Okay, we have this one here, a cased, a case Cogmore, the diminutive familiar of a famed sorcerer, Cogmore was mistreated and neglected for years as his master pursued the Archean arts. Thanks to a chance meeting with Zoe, okay, he was released from servitude to travel the land with her, ultimately enrolling in the same school Zoe technically attends. Okay. These are some wacky, whoa, okay. I think I've seen some before though. So this is BMO. Snowballing Lane won't bring back your precious honey. Okay, and you got Yumi there as well. Hmm. We have, this is the last one, Zapmar. is a, a curious monster that baffles even the most experienced of tamers. Sightings are limited to abandoned ruins that only the bravest dare enter, but taming one is even more challenging task. Only one Tamer has succeeded so far, their bond and the Zapmar lighting attacks growing stronger each day. With Lu it's something like, um, like, it reminds me a little bit of Pokemon, Ludo's the trainer. Okay, okay, so what do we have next? We have, let's get rid of these, we have, oh, we've got quite a few. So we have Caterpillar Cogmore. Cogmore, ever lost in thought, sat upon his two stall until he was f famished. Wonderland is full of such delights, he mused, gulping down the toadstool entirely. It would be a shame not to devour them all. Okay, so, so, f <laughs> these are some of the worst skins I've ever seen. I ain't gonna lie, I'll keep it real. These are some terrible skins. This one. <sighs> okay, Sonoran, Sorat, whatever that is. Sonoran Cogmore? Long considered a pest by frontier settlers, Cogmore critters have been found growing in numbers of number as more dangerous beasts are pushed to the brink of extinction. And they are very, very hungry. So this is another kind of spin on that as well. Okay. Re oh, ay, 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 ay. Reindeer. So we have reindeer Cogmore. It is rumoured that Cogmore stole his glowing nose and d antlers from a particularly adorable creature he devoured okay whether or not this this the theory is true <clears throat> cogmore is now the most famous reindeer of them all okay this one's a little bit different it's, i can i can get with this one a little bit okay okay reindeer and then we have deep sea okay deep sea kind of what was the um it was loch ness when it chogath perhaps my old mind was deceived by the fear the fury of the stop fury of the storm yeah as we sank i glimpsed the field of lights beneath the waves a thousand eyes of wicked alabaster they were dark things tearing into the flesh of our crew as if all they ever knew was hunger okay Okay, that's cool. And then we have, is this the last one? Hextech. So let's see what Hextech is saying. Nice. Okay, now we're getting there. We're getting there. A new Hextech innovation. Yep. Cogmore constructs 
constructs are available as pets for wealthy families. Delighting Piltover uppers crust with their fr friendly demeanour, really, and intricately complex designs. Though living things, they are viewed among the well-to-do as little more than status symbols. Seems pretty harsh if you ask me, and there's a guy there with a key. Poor thing. So, if I go back up now and give you my top three. Oh my lad. Okay, let, let, starters, this, this has to take the cake as the worst one I've ever seen. That is absolutely horrendous. That's terrible. Anyways, top three. Um, this is tough. It would be... Um, uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, Pugmore has to be number three. I do like Pugmore. I like this one, you know. I do actually like the Deep Sea Cogmore. I like that one. That would be number two. And my number one would have to be this one. Have to be this one. Hextech Cogmore. It just looks really good. A lot more modern than the rest of them. I'm feeling it. So, that are my, they, are, they are my top three skins. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to his login themes. If you haven't got any login themes, then I'll have a look at his interactions. If he doesn't have them, I'll move on to his spotlight. Let's go. So this is Cogmore's spotlight. He has no login themes. He has no interactions. No surprise there. The champions from Void are getting no love at all. And this is his son and I head top to gank. Always be sure to come in behind your... This is his spotlight. ...and allow your teammates crowd control spells to land easy artillery shots. As Kale turns invulnerable, remember you can always slow targets with Void Ooze, even if you can't kill... So this is probably the oldest one I've ever seen. I'm not going to put you through this. I'm not going to watch this. I'm going to go through a actual spotlight. Let's just call it that, if he has one. So if he has one, I'll watch it. And if he doesn't, we'll find one. Let's go. Can we... Uh, God damn it. Can we talk about this? Let's go. The new season brought in a ton of changes. Whoa, whoa, in fact... Whoa, 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 whoa. Talk about this. Who was that? Is that Kenan? The new season brought in a ton of changes. With certain items getting buffed, keystones being implemented, and fucking that. Whatever the fuck that is existing. Riot's goal is to give us a fresh experience was well met. The game seemed different, and as the meta started to redefine itself to fit this new playstyle, fucking this happened. What the fuck is this? It's AD City. I mean, sure, most of the changes were necessary to up the play percentage of certain ADCs, but this is bananas. Though a lot of the reworks have been more broken than my pride when I placed in Gold 5 this season, one of these jerks has given me enough salt to never need seasoning on my food again. I fucking hate Kog'Maw. Holy shit, this character is the definition of a walking asshole. And I'm not just saying that because he kinda looks like one. His damage output is insane. Let me explain. In the yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Let me just say this now. His damage output is mad. Especially if you've got AD. I thought, I remember playing against him when it was AD Kog'Maw and I thought, come on, it, it, it shouldn't be AD. Oh, it should be. I think there are two kinds of chain. Right, his ultimate is just dumb. His ultimate is stupid. DPS and burst. Burst characters like LeBlanc focus on dropping a- The guy's got some mud DPS. Fucking ton of damage on you in a split second to eliminate you from a fight. However, after their initial damage, they're just kind of useless. DPS characters like Shivana, however, whittle you down per second and kill you over time. It's pretty simple stuff. But now, with Riot's revolutionary new tilt technology, there exists something new. We present to you, BPS. Okay. Burst per fucking second. This isn't, this isn't a joke. Okay. okay. Guys, Kog'Maw is probably the only champion in the game that Riot has created an exception for. His attack speed can reach 5. Not 1.5, not the cap for everyone else 2.5, fucking 5. Now you're a smart kid. I mean, sure, your astrophysics can use a bit of work, but other than that, you're a genius. So that means I don't have to go into fucking detail about how broken this is. Though his W makes him only deal 55% of his AD per auto, it doesn't matter because the damage you rely on is also on hit and percentage damage anyways. Now, since you're technically not only relying on Kog'Maw's AD to carry you through your fights, you can imagine how Runons and Kog make a better team than Batman and Robin, or Harley and Joker, or Gwen Stacy and Gravity. That was a mean joke. Now, I know all of you understand what I mean, but for the newer kids, let me explain. The reason why Runons work so well- I like Gwen Stacy. I like that one. That movie was probably my favorite, actually. Anyway. On Kog'Maw is because though the bolts fired don't deal his full AD, they do apply on hit effects 100%. That favorite Spider-Man movie. Favorite Spider-Man. Not favorite movie. 
Come on. That means per auto, if Cog is in position to hit three enemies at a time with a 5.0 attack speed using this build, he's dealing all of this per second. Go ahead. Pause it. Take it all in. I ain't saying all that. I ain't saying all that shit. I ain't saying all that. Nope. Now let me tell you how to play Cog. You ready? Get out the fucking notepad and the number two pencils because this is gonna get a bit deep. Here First, recognize you're in a fight. Second, press W. Third, right click a carry. Now at this point you may be a bit lost, but if you follow the first three steps correctly, you now have a couple of seconds to read a book. I recommend Dao of Jet Kundo. Make breakfast or dinner, depending on oh, the time. Or that? even catch up on some of those important business emails you have. If you waited the entire five seconds, enjoy your LP. Repeat until challenger. Now don't get me wrong, Kogma isn't a flawless champion. To be honest, if your team can't protect you, you'll be all kinds of useless. But if your squad can peel for three seconds, then the game is yours. Now before you even start typing, Oh, Scooch is so stupid. Oh my god, he must not have seen Cog's nerf back in 6.5. What a fucking loser. I bet his girlfriend cheated on him because he has a small penis. Although three of those four things are true, I did in fact see the nerf. And since we're buds, I'll explain to you how insignificant it was. At level 9, pre-nerf Kogma had a 35 plus 12% attack speed increase due to the passive on his W. Now post-nerf level 9 Kogma, notice the fucking quotation marks, due to the increase in his base attack speed growth has a bonus attack speed of 16 plus 12%. Okay. Okay. Now looking at these two numbers, you see that the nerf to his early game is the difference of 19% attack speed. However, at level 18, pre-nerf Kog had 35 plus 25.5%, while post-nerf has 34 plus 25.5%. It's a 1% attack attack speed difference. Is that really a nerf? Okay. Is that really big enough of a nerf? Okay. His ban rate has dropped to 6.08% and he's still a monster. Is this what you wanted? Is this really what you wanted? You did this. You ruined League of Legends. God has left us. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Can We Talk About This? If there Okay, decent, decent. There wasn't a much out use, use flies, and I've watched a few of these guy, these guys' videos as well. Really like them, really like them, really good videos. Uh, and yeah, Cogmos is so annoying. I didn't touch too much of the range. Maybe it's changed now, or maybe it was different then. The range of his ultimates, and he keeps spamming, spamming them. So annoying. So annoying. But anyways, uh, once again, a little bit of a shame, really, because this is pretty short of a video in comparison to some other champions. The Void champions are not getting love. He didn't have hardly anything in comparison to other champs, but that's fine. I'm going to stop complaining because I could hear myself. So what I will say is, hopefully you guys enjoyed my thoughts, reactions, and review of this champion, Cogmo. I will continue on the Void theme until I've covered every Void champion. I might have covered, actually, almost every Void champion at this point. And then I'll move on to the next area. I'm thinking of, once I do move on, I'm going to move on to Aphelios. So many people say you have to review Aphelios simpler because of his amazing login theme and I do like to listen to a good login theme. So he will probably be, probably be the next champion I review once I've done all Void Champions. So anyways, I'll leave it here today guys on this one and yeah, I will see you in the next one.